Mm -hmm. Oh my god. The you whole gang my power part, right? The whole gang's here. The cheese making. Y'all, y'all have nothing else to do. Y'all that bored. <laughs> Not <a> bored. <laughs> They're gonna participate with us. I, I'm almost out of paper in my notebook. I only have like four more pages in my Ajua history notebook, and I don't want to get a new one. Yeah. No. That's true. It's a okay. waste of money. So we don't really have. Um, a lot of writings to look at today. We're just going to like talk a little bit today um, and discuss about some of the core themes in class, and then we'll look at maybe two writings uh, today. Um, so the first prompt that you had for unit three was all about land-based empires maintaining, consolidate, consolidating, and legitimizing power. Um, Generally, I think this one was kind of a more awkwardly written prompt. It comes from a particular skills guide because it kind of conflates the term maintain with consolidate. Um, so, um, and, and even legitimize too. Um, all of them are kind of interrelated. Um, consolidate deals with strengthening power. Um, uh, legitimizing deals with uh, making people perceive that you're right to rule is legitimate um, and maintaining power is almost like consolidating but it's easy to confuse the three but this essay kind of conflates all of them i was really impressed with all the essays that came out of it though um, i think it was unit three is definitely a unit that might um i don't think would be tested per se but it's something that you can draw on um, and i think you guys got land-based empires pretty well i think that was also your first essay was about land-based empires way, way, way back in the beginning of the year. So you guys did a good job. Um, then we talked about, I think earlier this week, um, this is a sample student essay. Uh, you, in yellow, you can see the highlighted uh, thesis statement. Um, here is the um, contextualization. It's only two sentences, her, her contextualization paragraph, and her thesis statement is also two sentences. Um, I think we commented on that. That might have just been like a random office hours thing I held, but I thought we talked about it, right? Or not? Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but. Well, on what okay. specifically? Well, I think it was really good. Um, the gist of it was, um, was there. I think the thesis statement was really good, and I think um, it kind of included all of the different topics. Um, that you could potentially talk about from all of those documents. That essay was super hard because it was different empires. It was like the Japanese empire under the Tokugawa shogunate. Um, it was the various Mughal empire, like the Islamic empires, the Mughal empire, et cetera. So you could have talked about different things. Uh, but in general, um, why don't we go ahead and brainstorm? What did you talk about in your essay? How do Who's you making the noise? Um, yeah, the ones that we wrote uh, last week? Right? Uh, yeah, unit three. Um, it doesn't have to be about the land-based empires. It can be about any state in general. Wait, what did you say? Answer the question. How do states maintain, consolidate, and legitimize power? Um, I talked yeah. about um, mm. absolute rule and militaristic force. That's what I talked about. And um, force. If you're gonna go with religion, you can put divine right. Because everyone else had like a different kind of divine right. So divine right, and that's kind mm -hmm. of at the intersection of both Absolute religion, and religion and politics, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? I'm sure. There was a lot, I wrote it down. I got it from Steve Heimer. So do it doesn't you necessarily, it? this is also, this is very good because you're focusing on like the nuances of what was in those documents. But um, what about like in the world today? How do states or, or uh, politicians legitimize and consolidate their power? Anyone can answer. Mm. Oh, we for consolidate, we forgot taxation and centralized government. So maybe okay. for consolidating, um, 
it's taxation. And I think you're getting at the difference, right? That the properly didn't recognize. Because yeah. if you tax someone, Money? is that making your country legitimate? Just taxation uh, alone. Um, Because they're paying for their country now, aren't they? Yeah, but you would have to give a service in return, right? And we talked mm. about how early states kind of were more like extortion rackets. They oh, really yeah. kind of, the only service that they provided was like protection. So taxation alone deals with strengthening the state, but it doesn't necessarily d deal with legitimizing power. That more comes from like you guys mentioned, religion and politics and absolute rule. So um, where would centralizing the government go to? Um, would it fall under? Centralizing the government um, is beneficial in AP world history, at least, because if you centralize power, um, you're more consolidating power. Yeah. Now, it gets a little tricky, too, because there, we talk a lot about empires um, in this class, and empires necess don't necessarily want to um, centralize power. For example, the British Empire doesn't necessarily want to centralize power um, over its colonies in the 18th, 19th century. They might have wanted just to um, actually just the, employ this tactic called divide and rule. So it gets a little different, but uh, this goes with consolidating power. What about um, the Mongols? Or am, I, or am I dumb? I remember that was one of the biggest reasons for their downfall was their inability to centralize power. Yeah, exactly right. They were, um, so I think um, that's interesting, right? Because the Mongols had an inability to centralize power, but it also benefited them in some sense too, right? Because you can think of it, depending on what document you get, um, it can also be because beneficial. Were, because do you really want to centralize? To... Go ahead, sorry. No. Go ahead. I was gonna say because they were able to like establish like different hordes that's what they call it right yeah, in different regions because they didn't centralize it like in russia middle east they had like princes or something I, i'm trying to remember i'm trying to remember that one in persia right mm -hmm. what's the restaurant called golden horde that's russian right? no what's oh. the restaurant called cons the okay, cons i was gonna so say that's, that's that's a con, right? that doesn't make any sense yeah but you see the Mongols really, their lack of centralization was beneficial. So they just got the countries or the, the states, peoples that they conquered to rule um, over, or to rule over those same peoples, right? And that's actually an asset in some sense because you wouldn't necessarily want to try to centralize power because you're not viewed as a legitimate ruler of like China per se. Um, so maybe it is kind of beneficial in some sense because for very large empires, they're usually not very, the power is usually not very centralized. They're usually a lot of local um, power holders and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, good. I think this bleeds into the next section. Uh, we're just going to skip these essays because we, we did talk about them. Um, I think colonialism really kind of shapes the modern world. Um, it shapes it in really, really profound ways. And then this is a map of what colonialism looks like. We talked about two different time periods of colonialism, European colonialism and imperialism in this. Oh my God, no. That was all the way at the beginning. How does that even happen, man? I don't know. It's because I need more sleep. Yeah, me too. Ugh. Oh, Delia, you know what? What? Have you seen Silver Linings Playbook? Oh, that's the one I really want to watch. I have it on my watch list, but I have not seen it. Okay. It's so, uh, well, I, I had seen it a long time ago, but I was just, yeah. I, I recently I, saw it again. It was so good. I also good. need to see Dead Poet Society, but. Um, that one I have mixed feelings about, but it is very good. Okay. I have only mixed feelings about it because I like, I like how he's a very inspirational teacher, but he's also like the analysis of the English literature is wrong in the movie. But isn't that totally subjective? No, like it's pretty objective when a lot of like English professors really hate the movie. Oh, okay. 
All right. I just I just been seeing lots of uh, like clips from it that I think sound like super powerful. So I was like, I want to watch that. No, it is a very powerful movie. I think it's just like um, it's more like one of those you know like when um, like let's say if your profession like there's a lot of like you know how physicists are always criticizing space movies that we all find really cool. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like it's like I really liked um, Apollo 13 and mm -hmm. was the last one Interstellar. Yes. And yeah. Gravity, but then like, um, who's that physicist that uh, has like the mustache? The physicist who has the mustache. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. He's the, the one. Physicist that... with the mustache. <laughs> yeah, he kills it for you because then he's like, "Well, this doesn't make sense because," and then he gets, goes on a rant. It's like the same thing. Like you can still enjoy the movie, but because I guess I'm more knowledgeable about English literature than physics. That Whatever, nerd. Whatever. Don't ruin movies. Totally true. I'm still right, probably so going to watch it, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to look it, it up on Letterboxd. Definitely look it up. It's very good. This okay. is a graph of what um, countries that have been under European control um, from the 1500s to the 1960s. Um, so a lot of you answered... Um, in the Industrial Revolution and then European imperialism slash colonialism for that poll that I gave you on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was any right answers to those questions. You could have argued any different way, but I would say that it's very hard to make the point that um, European colonialism or the Industrial Revolution aren't the two biggest things that have happened in, in world history. Um, you can see every country basically except um, seven had been colonized by Europe um, in the 1500s to 1960s. Um, pretty crazy. There are two major waves of colon colonialism. We talked about colonialism here um, in this unit, and then we're going to talk about um, new imperialism that comes in the 1880s um, to 1910. Um, that focuses on um, Africa and then Southeast Asia. Okay. So there's different forms of colonialism. There's different types of rule. Um, your DBQ on the AP exam might be about um, explain. It might not ask for like you know the definitions of those types of rule, but there are different. It might be like evaluate the strategies Europeans use to dominate um, the world. And it might give you two or documents from different time periods or something like that. I'm thinking that your document based question is going to be super expansive only because of the fact that it is um, it is supposed to determine whether you get college credit or not. And I think European imperialism is one of those big topics in AP world history um, that has had such a transformative effect on politics that and, and the world to this day that it's 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 could very likely be tested. Uh, but anybody want to comment on, hold on. So this is, this is the definition of colonialism. So colonialism is a practice of domination which involves the subjugation of one people to another. Pretty basic, I think we get the idea. Um, people get the terms imperialism and colonialism mixed up. Colonialism is a type of imperialism um, where it usually involves actually settling physically down um, in another um, territory. Um, so just go ahead and go back and look at that slide. Uh, there's different types of rule, uh, like um, spheres of influence. Uh, partial European controller influence is usually places where um, they weren't actually physically colonized. Um, in Africa, this is probably a little bit mislabeled. Um, there weren't necessarily a lot of settlers um, in some parts of Africa. In some parts, there were a considerable amount of settlers, um, but there's there's kind of a difference. Um, but I think you can use them interchangeably. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is we'll talk about that later before we get into like looking at the essays and then talking about colonialism is we talked about different um, tools for understanding uh, AP world history. Um, you really have to know all the ideologies and the ideas. And 
the impact ideologies and ideas can have on world events. Mercantilism is one such ideology and idea that I'll come back to when I show you the DBQ that I wrote for you guys yesterday um, for Unit 4. But we'll get to that later. And then this is what I wanted to talk about today. Um, so we're going to look at European colonialism from this point. We're just going to brainstorm. Um, there are different kinds of violences um, articulated by this one uh, peace theorist called uh, Johann Goltung. Um, he developed a kind of tool for understanding violence. So direct violence is stuff that we all understand. It's um, you know hitting someone, killing someone, maiming, bullying, sexual assault, all kinds of stuff. Um, structural violence is more at like the systemic level. Um, so it's more um, systems that hinder people's ability to gain uh, access to um, import or access to stuff that allows them to meet their basic needs. So structural violence can be so many different things. It can be like a legal system, like apartheid in South Africa, which we talked about for Unit 9. Um, it can also be like, oh, we don't have a good healthcare system. Um, so that's structural violence. Um, the fact that we don't have, um, there's so many different things where, so many different ways where you can talk about structural violence. And this is actually a very big concept in uh, college. In any sociology, political science class, um, structural violence is talked about a lot. And then the last one is cultural violence. Uh, cultural violence is how um, people maintain structural and direct violence and they legitimize it, um, how it becomes acceptable. Um, and so, any questions on this before we brainstorm about how colonialism and aspects of it fit into either three categories? No. No. No? No, no. no questions. Okay. So let's brainstorm right now. How does direct violence, what happens in, under uh, colonialism that falls under direct violence? Um, I'm thinking of like, can we say like, I think this could be structural too, but um, what's his name? The guy from the Inca, was it Pizarro? I can't say his name. Pizarro, yeah. When he killed the guy, the main guy, Atahualpa, right? Didn't name? Pizarro get, oh wait, no, he did, he killed uh, the... Yeah, he did. He took him for uh, correct because he's like right? boom, dead. And then everyone got like super upset about that. They were not happy about that. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. So Pizarro kills him. That's a good example of structure or yeah. direct violence. You gotta spell that, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How that. Yeah, that's how you spell I, even, I can't even say Pizarro. What's Pizza. another Pizza. of direct violence? Did colonists kill like natives? I mean, I don't know if that's structural, but if you're killing someone like that, that seems kind of like direct violence. Yeah, they physically killed natives and natives killed colonists. Hello. Warning. Anything else? Mm. No, that's, I mean, that's it, right? It's it's not something that's supposed to be hard. What about structural violence? The ecomienda system, right? That could be exactly, one. very good. The, I was just gonna say slavery in general, but. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. That's a, yeah, slavery could be it. The fact that it was legal, right? Slavery, that's mm -hmm. structural violence. What else? Mm -hmm. Slavery in the in the context of colonialism, right? What the heck? There. Anything else? Um, I'm trying to think.
Mm, did they have? I guess it would be like the Hacienda system as well. Um, maybe even racism, like racial hierarchies. Like there was a mixing of different races and stuff like that. So people that were mixed were between European and native blood. They were kind of in between people that were at the very top, which were Europeans, and at the very bottom were just indigenous people. Um, so that kind of social uh, social um, system is a form of structural violence because they definitely had diminished access to basic goods. Mm. And then finally, cultural violence, which is just about justifying these two. How did the Europeans uh, justify these two? Oh, white man's burden? Um. Yeah. This one is, oh. I saw it in your essay, but this is more, it's formally called that in new imperialism, but yeah, you can see that when like, with the conversion to Christianity, right? The like, yeah. oh, we have to save them. It's definitely, yeah. Um, why are you yelling? I'm in a call. I'm having class. Why are you yelling? Seriously, come here. All right, what else? Oh my God. The sound is annoying and yelling. Um, I know this one, I know this one, I had it. Oh, can we put like Catholicism? That can be cultural. Like when they, I don't wanna say divine right, but you know, when they try to enforce it, when they try to enforce it on like natives and they would like know you thought, so. Yeah, maybe conversion to Christianity as a motive. It's again, civilizing again. Um, so yeah, those are good ideas. So this kind of exists in AP world history. It's very violent. Um, I hope this helps section off your brain to thinking about um, different topics that, um, you know, either the prompt wants you to talk about, if they're talking usually about systems and you're focusing on stuff that is violent because it's, it impacts, um, because it's structural, right? Um, if they're talking about justifications it's you're going to be focusing and honing in on this category. Um, AP world history um, really becomes easier to understand if you're able to understand this, right? So violent things happen. Direct violence happens every day. Structural violence happens every day. Um, it's not because, um, you know, the, the uh, I guess the proverbial there, there are good guys and bad guys type thing. I don't think anybody that's done anything horrible in AP world history views what they did as horrible. Um, there's usually um, all kinds of justifications for why they did that. And so making your essays more interesting is um, an ability to explain those justifications and actually see them in the documents themselves, because there are a lot of those justifications. There's a lot of um, cultural violence on display in documents and be able to um, undermine them and um, call them out for BS. Um, but yeah, and then all I wanted to look at was two essays today, um, and then we are done. Don't look at my screen. Don't look at my screen. All right, so this was the essay that I wrote for you, or we'll look at that later. Let's see, let me find the other one. This you'll read next week, only part of it. Y'all like my screensaver? Oh, what's your screensaver? I can't see it. It's okay. oh, big rock. cool. You're so cool. Thank you. All right, where is it? Oh, here it is. All right, so just read, let's see, maybe we'll read this and then tell me what you think about the contextualization and thesis. And then we'll go to my essay and look at the sources. We'll read the first two paragraphs. So this one and then the other one. What are we even looking at? We're looking at the screen like here. Or let's just read mine because it doesn't sound like there's a lot of people on the call. Uh -huh. Let's read it. All right, so go Is ahead and have at it. What do, you, what do you like or uh, dislike about my essay? It can be about style or content. Just go ahead and read the first. I hate your entire style. You're the worst. 
Okay. <laughs> what specifically? Okay, let me see. Let me see. Mm, 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 mm. Is there supposed to be reasons in the thesis for why they, it was significantly driven by economic motives? Yeah, that's a good point. European exploration of the new world, however, was driven significantly by economic motives. I still think um, it's, it's very well written, but it's just that um, you you said like uh, you you moved on to say yeah, um, religious motives were also it was also another thing, but it was more economic than anything. But like, I don't know if you're just doing the reasons in the topic sentences of each paragraph. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, Delia, I didn't even intentionally do that, but yeah, you're exactly right. Um, that's what the AP exam wants you to do. Um, so yeah, you, you would need to put that. So you could put economic motives and then you could put such as, and then explain the economic motives. Mm -hmm. I think that would be good, like to be more specific. Um, I would also say too, this would get still get you points on the document base. Like it still would get count as a thesis, um, but it wouldn't. Uh, it would still count as a thesis, so it wouldn't get any points off. Uh, maybe this pushes it. Like the push to explain why is more to like push you guys to elaborate a little bit more. But yeah, I think you're exactly right. It could have been more specific and explained what those economic motives were. And I should have. So I could have put such as gold, um, the desire to make a profit. Gold, uh, uh, easy labor, I don't know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. I think that uh, it's good in your contextualization, you kind of outlined it by saying the motives of gold, God, God, ugh, God, gold, and glory. That's a good contextualization, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's straight to the point, and it's only, how many sentences? Two, three. Yeah. High Pretty five. simple, straight to the point. Um, I think too, if you guys are able to, because you all have to, you all have to consider too, who's grading your exams? They're AP World History teachers. Um, AP World History teachers have their own like biases and like um, unique, I guess, ticks. Um, so yeah. like they might be more receptive if you're putting a date to something, right? So like, I would count, like if you explain what mercantilism is as like specific evidence, but maybe one AP World History teacher might not see that. And they would want you to attach, okay, like in the um, 1500s, mercantilism was a powerful ideology, like attach a date to it. So I would just emphasize, um, try oh. to start incorporating dates. They can be rough, um, but you don't have to like, worry too 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 much about it um, so i think like contextualization like that we saw in the other essay where it was like it listed off the different types of empires the mughal safavid islamic or uh, the mughal safavid and ottoman empires um i think i would think that's okay but maybe an ap world history teacher another one might think like that's not good enough contextualization there has to be like a specific development or process um going on uh that's interesting makes things a lot more complicated i guess the takeaway then okay never mind that's a bad takeaway because i think the development of islamic empires and land-based empires is a development right but i think maybe try incorporating more dates into your essay like maybe try to aim for like three or four specific dates and then when you have the ability to use your textbook i don't want you to use your textbook a lot because it would be a crutch. Only use it maybe if you want to look up a date and want to include a specific date um, in your essay. Is that clear? Yeah. Then this is just a practice, right? A lot of you, um, what th something that happens in college your freshman year is you guys were never really taught, um, or, or you guys were taught writing, but it happens everywhere, right? Um, we're all bad writers when we enter college, um, usually in the college's eyes. I mean, it, it, any college knows that the people that they're that are coming into college are not necessarily um, the most college equipped writers. Um, and so they try to prepare you at most colleges, not at all, but at most they try to prepare you 
Uh, one good thing is your thesis should also outline what you're going to talk about. Nowhere in my essay do I like make another side argument. I might make a side argument, but I there's nowhere in my essay. Like my essay is pretty straightforward. I kind of project out what I'm going to talk about in the essay. And so here in blue, it basically reword it and it becomes my topic sentence. And that's what I talk about for that topic sentence. And then in yellow, I do the same, reword it and it becomes my topic sentence. Um, for the DBQ that we have to turn in today, how many documents do we have to use? You have to use four. Four, okay. But, but like I would, two body paragraphs or how, I'm trying to like make a structure. Yeah, you can use two body paragraphs. I would say you don't have to be limited by that. Um, I think, okay. or, or two, yeah, you don't have to be limited by that, but that's generally a good way because I think you could talk about two, because two is a good way to organize it because you could have two sentences in your thesis and then two topic sentences which are which are argumentative, which you argue and support with your documents, yeah. Mm, okay. Um, anything here? Do, uh, let's just try to identify because this, where do I source? And then I'll let you guys go. And then where do I um, include specific outside evidence? Well, I didn't see the document, so I don't know <laughs> if what's outside. Okay, then where do I source? Let me see. Um, for the first one, you want to explain who Ferdinand the second is? Who you're describing who the speaker is? Yeah, that's the speaker. I'm trying to see about. And you include specific outside evidence in the highlighted peak. Mm -hmm. So this one is more my sourcing, right? Because I explain and I, I do what's called hedging here, um, which is like, I'm not sure if that's what he was trying to do. And that's OK to do. But maybe I want to be more bold. Ferdinand II, a Spanish monarch, is trying to obsc obscure, obscure the economic motives of Spaniards. So I describe what element of soap. Um, were, were you discussed document five? Are you sourcing anything there? Um, look at it, however, it's Lambus the King of Leaders. Mm, no, isn't that like more specific evidence, like outside evidence? Not really sourcing. This is more like my, no, this is citing. This, I think you think it's sourcing because what I do a lot of the times is I try to like restamp what I said in kind of like the topic sentence. Mm. But yeah, I get, I get what you mean by that. Um, the, this is more like purpose, right? You have to source two documents so it gets easier, but, um, this is outside evidence, right? But it would count towards the sourcing point. Um, so this outside evidence can be used and it provides context to, uh, document one. It it would count towards both, right? It would count towards the outside evidence point and the sourcing point. But I also encourage you to include specific pieces of outside evidence. So this isn't found anywhere in the document where it talks, the, none of the documents talk about the encomienda system or the Mita system. Um, so that's something that I include. Um, you include outside evidence to add context to the documents or the topic sentence. And that's what I do too. Just don't throw it in there because a lot of kids are going to be tempted to do that. Don't throw it in don't there. Throw what in there. Outside evidence. Like, don't throw it in there no. with like, oh, like, let me just look up outside evidence and throw it in here because it kind of fits. It kind of has to flow, yeah. right? Yeah. This relates back to my topic sentence. You get why I put it in there because I'm talking, mm -hmm. document four talks about Pizarro. So I talk about how Pizarro conquered the Incan Empire and the Mita system. That's outside evidence. This is also outside evidence right here. It's specific outside evidence. It helps contextualize document two or add context to document two. You need two pieces of outside evidence, and that will be two points. You need to source two documents and explain how that sourcing is relevant. That would be two points. Using um, four out of five of the documents to support an argument, basically your argument is your thesis, um, to support that thesis. Um, that's three points. 
and then thesis contextualization, two points, and then complexity is one point. Honestly, this rubric is pretty easy. I think you guys know how to do it, but just make sure that you're trying as hard as possible. Any questions mm -hmm. before? Um, will you be making like the little assignment for us to submit it on? It should already be there. Um, so like you can submit it either in like the unit four, I think it says part five or part four. I look at both of them. Um, so you can submit it there. I'm going to look at both of them this, this weekend. Um, so like Saturday. So if you need that extra time, you can get that extra time. My only push, Dahlia, is like, I don't want you working. And this sounds like me being dumb, but like, I don't want you working hard on it. Like, I want you to time yourself on it. Like well, 45 I mean, minutes. I, you don't want us to like make like spend three hours making the perfect essay. You want us to test like how we would test for the actual exam. Because it's not going to help us if we're sitting there doing research for hours and for the for that. Oh my god, my phone fell. Yeah, exactly right. So time yourself for 45 minutes. Um, also look at the YouTube video where I posted like, and I wrote the DBQ for you guys, I would maybe look at it after if you already did it before. That's okay. But look at it after you can so you can see my thought process and how I would set it up. Honestly, you know what's best for you. You know, if you need to type it or write it out, you know, if you need to take notes on a side scratch sheet of paper, you know how to organize it. Um, do what is best for you. But definitely use that as a resource too. like, my thinking process is totally different from yours. There's no identical thinking process. Um, so yeah, I would just like push you to come up with like a game plan, like go into this, like knowing like, oh, I'm gonna have a scratch sheet of paper on the side. I'm gonna read the documents first, which everyone should be doing. And then I'm gonna start grouping the documents. And I want at least um, a four paragraph essay. So maybe I'm gonna group the documents um, into one paragraph and group another into like two different groupings or maybe three different groupings, however you want. Um, yeah, so do what's best for you. Experiment in these time frames too, uh, or experience, exper experiment with these essays, right? Um, you're, you're kind of testing the waters. We don't have a lot of time before the actual exam. Four when weeks sounds like a lot of time, uh, May 21st. But it's not realistically a lot of time because you guys don't see me every day. Um, we don't interact every day. And you guys know you don't do AP World History every day, too. So four weeks Hello. is not a lot of time. <sighs> so we're all stressed. And also keep in mind, too, um, distance learning looks different everywhere, right? And for some places, they're able to, to I guess, I don't know. So we're going to be compared with like the national level. So maybe even though distance learning might be different here, um, it might be completely different somewhere else. And and so just like keep that into yeah. consideration. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, what was Black Lives Matter missing? I don't know. I think he was just on for moral support, but he never like commented. I think he just has it on. He does. That oh, with yeah. I was going to say, is, is Black like listening to us? I don't know. I suspect he does that with meetings. Like, Wait. He's gonna so, anything. so you want to to source those four documents? Source Let's them be on? honest, Andrea's doing that right now too, though. I'm yeah. listening. I'm listening. <laughs> you haven't talked to me, sir. I'm <laughs> tired. That's all. Yeah. So we source those four documents. Yeah. Or no, source two, Dahlia. But I would recommend sourcing three because if one of them is wrong. You're done. Like you're not gonna get a sourcing point. <laughs> Hello. Watch me do that. Fair enough. Honestly, um, watch me not finish. I don't think I'm gonna finish. If you don't finish, Mira. Well, I I did finish last time. It wasn't very good, but I did. I kind of stopped it halfway through because I had to look up one of the leaders I was talking about because I I forgot like the certain dates that he was like active and i had to like stop so i paused my timer but <laughs> you know yeah. honestly when i wrote this one, i actually didn't use like outside i just watched your video like on two times speed 
and then I just wrote it. But for me, <laughs> coming up with like the how I would word the essay, I think that was what took me time because I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back like, oh, let me look up something. It's like either I knew it or I did it. Like yeah. even when I put Russia, I was like, that's twenty fourteen. I'm not looking at. I yeah. go, oh my god. I would also <laughs> push you to do that too. Like, um, if you're gonna look something up try to keep it to a minimum because it is just testing your skills, right? Um, yeah. I would also say that have your resources like annotated, right? Or like some kind of an outline. I'm gonna try to provide one for you like where you can find certain topics in different units. No, but... I mean, Andrea making our own little thing. Yes. Uh, we're making one on anchor chart. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Ready. That's we supposed to be my job, but if you wanna pass that along, you should do that. Um, <laughs> that costs like 500 Teachers pay teachers. Yeah, teachers pay teachers. Yes. I, I'm actually so broke, I haven't used that yet, so. <laughs> but still, you. <laughs> Not even, it wasn't in notice. <laughs> Love um, it. But what, what I was going to say for sure is, like, make sure you have them annotated. Like, if you're using the Princeton Review that I gave you or some kind of book, like, have them, like, you don't have to have them annotated, but have, like, little, um, what's that thing called? Sticky notes. What's that little thing called? <laughs> <laughs> no, mine's um, too annotated. Like, what? How I take notes is a mess, to be honest, and I actually need to get more organized, too. But I would take notes on that, too. I don't think I want to do the essay. My brain is dead. How? Well, that's all of us. Well, this week I have why? no ideas, sir, because you said um, we had the modified assignment and you said just make sure you do the DBQ. So every day I didn't know what to submit.